Okay, let's get off. Okay, this is page 56 in the reader. Uh, okay, so I have this reaction, 5 iron 2 plus plus MnO4 minus plus 8H plus goes to 5. Uh, ferric ion plus maybe it's two ion plus four water. And then I know there's 1.63 grams of this, uh, 21.9 milliliters of that. I want to know this molarity. Yeah. Okay, so this is just a typical titration reaction. What you would do, convert this to moles, step one. Step two, molar ratio. Step three, go to units requested. In this case, units requested molarity or moles per liter. Okay? So three steps in any stoichiometry problem. Titration is a type of stoichiometry problem. So step one, 1.63 grams. And then uh, you need the molar mass of this. It's just iron. So I think it's, on the periodic table, see 55.85. Is that right? Uh -huh. Okay. And then the molar ratio, there's one mole of permanganate ion for every five moles of ferrous ion. Just got that from the reaction. That'd be two plus. Okay? And then, so, this is step one. Change the moles. Step two, molar ratio. Step three, go to the unit I've requested. So, moles per liter. I have moles right now. I'll get a different color for step three. Uh, let's do black. Divide by liters. Okay. Well, I don't have liters, but I have 21.9 milliliters. Okay. Change that to liters. That's uh, 1,000 milliliters per liter. Is that okay? So everything in black is in the denominator. Cool. Okay. Who's next? Oh my goodness. Okay. One of you two right there. What page? 78 in the practice exams? Okay. 78. Okay. This question right here. Okay. What you're going to do for the root mean square velocity part here, you'll see this is a question that pops up every couple years, or every few years, maybe I should say. You'll go. The root mean square velocity is the square root of the average of the squares. So it'd be 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. See how I'm squaring every value here? Plus 9 squared, etc. Can I go dot, dot, dot here? Okay. Divided by the total number of values because I'm taking the average. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven. So I'm averaging the squares, that's the mean square, and then I'm taking the square root. Cool. Uh, same, same question? New question, yes. Page 66. Okay, hold up here. 17, you said? Yeah. Okay. This is another uh, titration problem. Unfortunately, you can't see it, but I wish you could. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, okay, for this one, uh, you for this kind of titration problem, uh, when it has the word neutral in there, or acid base and neutral. Can you focus it? Oh. Okay. It has the word neutral, or acid base or neutral. Basically, it's okay, right? Yeah. Okay. You want to find the moles of this one and the moles of that one. Okay, sounds good to me. Oh, uh, let's see. That's 17. B, got basic. And you said potassium hydroxide is larger? So that's correct. Is that right? Okay, makes sense now, though. Awesome. Okay, uh, in purple, I suppose, maroon, yes? Uh, in the Richter, uh, in the Richter equation, 
Yes. Correct. So we will, we will only in the parentheses take one over the initial square. Correct. Correct. Perfect. Okay. Do I need to repeat that? Yes. yes. Okay. If it says for the Rydberg equation that it starts at a particular orbit, say orbit two for fun, and then it ionizes, that means that n final is technically goes to infinity, meaning the one over n final. Term. What's 1 over infinity squared? Zero. Oh, and you have something to show me really badly here. Okay. Is that related to this? Oh, this is a different one, but you just got really excited. Okay. <laughs> that second term goes to 0, so you just use the first part of the term, the end initial. Perfect. And that's a little bit depends who's got you in my class. A little bit in our mind. I tell you that early. But a little bit, you're going to see that more on the final because uh, we technically use the word ionization in the next chapter. Okay. Well, this is really tiny words here. Um, looks big up there, I guess. Okay, I'll try to show work on this here. Um, and the particle happens to be at n equals 5 state. At what point does the particle have zero probability of being found out? Wow. Oh, this is Hayashi a Nice, Hayashi. Okay. All right. You're going to have a fun day. Oh, All right. Uh, so, if the particle n equals 5, so how many nodes do I have, anybody? And minus one, or there's four nodes. So draw your box. This is a particle in a box. Kind of like PCAP, so you're super into chapter seven. All right, this is a box that goes from zero to L, but I happen to know L, it is what number? Anybody? 10 nanometers. Okay, and this is one, two, three, four. Why did I just put four dots there? Four nodes. Nodes are where they cross this axis, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna get a different color pen. All right, I start going upwards and go through each dot. Okay? All right, now, I know I forgot the question. The particle happens to be at n equals five, say, at what point does the particle have zero probability of being found? At the node. That's where there's zero probability, at the node. So. What are, let's just, let me just pick one, let's see. Okay, let's pick that one. Where is that, x equals what on this, because this is the x-axis. x equals what right there? Two. How do you know that? Genius, yes. That's you. <laughs> How do you know it's two? Okay, I'll just tell you. I think you know, but two, four, six, eight. I mean, how else can you do it? divide through by five? You see what I mean? There's five segments. One, two, three, four, five. That means each segment has a length of two. So at two nanometers, four nanometers, six nanometers, eight nanometers, etc. Not including the endpoints of the box. Is that okay? That's easy. Do you explain it that easily in class? Oh. Oh, yeah, B, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, what's your question? Page 101. Hold up. Your boy, hey. Hold up. Uh, 101. Okay, what number, Carla? 10. How do I know what? Oh. When I say dry grass, what do I mean, anybody? It means there's no water. That's it. it just, so that's another way to say there's one gas, or it's a way of saying we are not doing a collected over water product. Is that okay? So, problem solved? Next. Yes, in gray. Um, page 89. Okay, hold up. Page 89.
Okay, what number? Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh yeah, this is super fun. This one? Uh, just general how to solve it? Yeah, that was so exciting. You're like, I want to do it together one more time. Okay. So I gave you this. So when I'm doing a unit's problem, there's two ways that you've seen it. By the way, how often do you see a unit's problem on an exam? Every exam. There's two ways to see it. One is I literally give you a, a conglomerate of units that you simplify. The other way is I give you a formula. You put in the units and then you simplify the units. See what I mean? This is the second type where you give a formula. Okay. This is the energy of your friend Hayashi's uh, particle in the box. He probably loves this formula. Okay. So uh, this is this is the energy formula. It was. I didn't mention it in class, it's in the reader and the text, but we haven't used it. You just need to plug in everything. So H, what's the units of H? Joule seconds. Yeah, if you didn't remember that, that's on the back of the exam. You don't need the number. Okay, N, what's the units of N? In chapter 7. In chapter 7. Not moles. That, moles is chapter 6. Yeah, no units. No units, just like a number, kind of principal quantum number. Awesome, thank you for that help. Eight, no units. M, what's that? Mass, so I put kilograms. What is capital L? We just saw it. It's, it's yeah, but we need SI units, not nanometers, but meters. It's the length of the box, okay? Uh, do you want me to simplify too, or is this the hard step? Oh, okay, some of your friends want me to simplify. You probably already know what's happening, so you can zone out for a second. <laughs> Joule squared second squared, because the H is squared, over a kilogram over a meter squared. Then you want to simplify. What's a joule? A joule is a newton meter. Newton squared, meter squared, second squared. Okay, so the... This is the first part of the joule squared, then we got the second squared carries. Kilogram, meter squared. Then I want to convert uh, the newton. The newton is a kilogram, meter per second squared, and the newton itself is squared. Meter squared, second squared. Kilograms, meter squared. Oh, I didn't even notice. I have a meter squared that can cancel. Get rid of that garbage. Okay, what's left here? Oh my gosh. Um, okay, let me rewrite a little bit. Uh, kilograms squared, meters squared, second to the fourth, second squared, all over kilograms. Whoa. Okay. So let's see. Kil one of the kilograms are gone. Uh, two of the seconds are gone. Let's see what's left. Uh, kilograms, uh, I have a meter squared, I think that says, and a second uh, squared, okay? Oh, over a second squared, thank you. All right, so now I've kind of simplified everything, whoever was interested in this. Uh, I've simplified everything, but now I want to see, was this multiple choice? Yeah, this is not one of my possibilities in the multiple choice. Uh, I have, I'm choosing between these, so I haven't finished simplifying. For example, this could be a joule or a pascal or a newton or something like that. So let's see if I can figure out what this is. Well, I know that, let's go on scratch here for a second. I'll go to a different color. Blue. Uh, I know that, let's rewrite some of these. A newton is a kilogram meters per second squared. I know a pascal is a newton per meter squared. I know that a joule is uh, a newton meter. Okay, what do you think this is? You think it's a pascal? Okay, let's take a look. Uh, that's a kilogram meter per second squared, all divided by a meter squared. I don't think that's going to work out. It's going to put a meter in the denominator. It's not a pascal. You think it's a joule? Yeah, it's a newton, one of these times one more meter. Yeah, it's a joule. This is going to end up being a joule. Okay. 
Here's There's an easier way to do this. Does anybody, did anybody realize what the easier way was? <coughs> oh, you realize it's easier. You have a big question. Okay. You have the next question. <coughs> okay. You're, you're, on, you're on deck. What was the easier way of doing this? Okay. Uh, there's two easier ways of doing this. When I started the question, I told you this is which equation? The energy equation. So I better answer better be two ways. There's a second easy way to figure it out. The equation's on the back of the exam. And it says energy. It has to be in joules. So why do it the hard way? I don't know why you did that, not the hard way. But whatever. It's fun practice, right? Okay, yes. This, this, what does this mean? This, this means a, 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 an energy at a particular step or a particular orbit. This here means kinetic energy. So lowercase e is kinetic energy, uppercase e means energy, generic. You're, okay, your real question now, what was that? 98, 18, Okay, in particular part. Oh great, okay, the whole thing. All right. Well, you see orbits here. So the first thing I'm thinking is the Rydberg equation. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna find from the Rydberg equation is this energy right here. So I'm not going in order, but that's really common, not just on my exam, but anybody's exam. Just because you have a multi problem doesn't mean you have to go in order, okay. So don't impose something on the question that doesn't exist. Change in energy, or what's called just the energy here, is the Rydberg constant, 2.179 times 10 to the 18 joules. One over the n initial is four squared, minus the n final is two squared. So it's gonna be a positive or negative number, anybody? It'll end up being negative. So I'll let you calculate that, is that fine? That. Now, another easy thing to get here, this is equal to h nu. You see how they ask you for frequency? There's frequency, and h is a constant. Is that okay? So I can have a calculate that, it'll be okay? And this is also equal to hc over lambda. h is a constant, c is a constant. Lambda would be the wavelength. So you see how we just knocked out those three right there? Okay, let's do this one now. De Broglie, only one possible equation, which is this one. We have a wavelength, so I'll solve for this. Okay? Now, I didn't give you information on the mass, so you do what? Mass of electron, which is given on the back page of the exam. Cool? The color is based on what answer you get here, which I don't know what I got. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, yes. 66. 6617, which part? I, I, I. I, I, also known as three. Nice, but I, I, I sounds a lot funnier. Okay. All right. Uh, this is a pretty common question. Uh, not, I should say. It is not a common question. Well, let's see. I have to read, finish reading it, but. I think it's common, let's see. Uh, liquid nitrogen poured on balloon, I did something like this in class. Uh, it shrinks because the temperature goes down, that's Charles' law. Uh, so, a lot of you are in a good mood tonight, I like that. So, uh, initial temperature, 22, which you had to add 273 to. This is minus 120, which you added 273 to. And you want to know the fraction of the original volume. So the original volume is D1, right? So you want to know this. Is that okay? And it looks like just a fraction, so whatever that fraction is. Cool. Okay, good then. Oh, nobody else? Oh, yes. Page 100. Rocketing. 
here on the pink one. What number? Where, where did you get stuck here? So you had kilojoules per mole. Uh, did you use Avogadro's number? Oh, that's horrible. 550 kilojoules per mole is the energy. You want the wavelength, HC over lambda. Uh, H is Planck's constant, is the speed of light. What did you, if you used 550,000 right here, what answer did you get? in nanometers, if you literally, can you do that calculation for me? So if you literally use 550,000, tell me what answer you get in nanometers. Uh, while you're doing that, this will be a uh, to be continued, so I'll come back to you in a second. Who's next? Oh, I dropped my pen while you're thinking, oh, if there's nobody else, we'll go home. Oh, yes. Four on page 60, 60. Number four, which the following? Uh, pop there. Oh, which the following formula is going to be used to find the pressure at a certain depth of a liquid? That is A, B, C, D, or E. Anybody? C. This for depth of pressure is DGH. Okay. This one is Dalton's law. This would be for a, a mixture of gases. This is force over area. We pretty much never use it, but yeah, force over area. It's for a liquid. It's the ideal gas law, and that's the what? This is momentum or impulse. Okay, so it's not even pressure, but it has a little bit. Okay. Uh, did we get that number? Still working on it. Next. Yay, way up there. Page 69. 69. Did you say 11? Yes. Okay. Here. Okay. Uh, what's the pressure of someone half a meter under water? We're going to use what formula? DGH. DGH, the one we just saw. Uh, so, do you want me to go through the math? Yeah. Okay. The hard part of this will just be the conversions. Otherwise, the math is going to be easy. So, So the, let's do it like this, half a meter, so this is one half a meter or 0 0.5 meters. G is given on the back page, 9.81 meters per second squared. I'll make sure these are all SI units. Uh, density of water is given on the back page. It's 1.0 grams per centimeter cubed, but that is not the units I want. I want kilograms per meter cubed. <coughs> And then I think it asks for the pressure, yeah, which will end up being Pascal's in SI units, okay? Uh, do you want me to go through, so it's just multiplying these three, but you need to convert these units. Do you want me to do that conversion for you? No. Oh, okay, you're good. Okay. Did you get the... Okay, for the previous one, the to be continued, that we were all in total suspense about, uh, you got, say it again, 10 to the negative 22, okay, and that's in nanometers or meters? Nanometers, great. Okay, take that number and multiply by Avogadro's number. Tell me what you get. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And this is uh, page 100, top of the page right here. You got 217. See, on the other side, it's per mole. See, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd per mole. So you need to basically divide, or you're multiplied by all the numbers on this side. Just for a clarification, uh, this is, remember, per mole. So E. Joules, let's just say joules per mole. So if you take Avogadro's, 
6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Yeah, the moles will now cancel. You're dividing here. On the, you were working on the other side of the equation at that point, so I ended up multiplying. Or basically move this over to the other side, it'll be a multiplication. Or lambda will equal hc over e. And you're dividing by e or multiply by e. Uh, Where's moles? It's totally gone now. Uh, you multiply, the, you divide it here, divide the, the denominator by R dot. We're supposed to multiply. Is it? Uh, this is what's the energy content of a wavelength of light. Yeah, and this is per mole, and I really wanted one kid to so, He said that, yes.